Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah, I know it's been a little while since I've made a video, but don't worry, all good on my end. Uh, in fact, I've just been so busy, I haven't really had the time. Uh, and as you can see, we're in a new uh, lab setup here, and I've got a ton of cool new gear and equipment here that I'll have to make videos on at some point. And I've even expanded into an office space, so maybe I'll give a tour of that as well. Uh, but anyway, good to be back. I've got kind of a fun project I've been working on here I want to show you. Let's take a look. Do you guys remember back in the day with like the Sega or Nintendo uh, when you get to the start screen and if you did nothing it would sort of start playing itself almost like a demo version of the game like it was a live playing. Uh, well I always thought that would be kind of a cool screensaver which was sort of the inspiration for this project and uh, I was recently working with these 1.69 inch tiny little smartwatch displays and thought this is it. I'll make a little tiny knickknack video player so this could just sit on your desk and play videos on a loop forever. And of course we've got an ESP32 S3 on this thing so we can do a lot more than just that. You know we can add internet connectivity, we've got Bluetooth, and I've got a lot of demo projects coming in the future where I'll show you all of that. But in this video, I just want to give you uh, kind of the basics on how to get started with this thing right away so you can load videos up and get it playing. All right, but just before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to this post here, which was incredibly helpful in getting this thing running. I think I, I think there's a lot of good posts actually in here, so be sure to check this out. I'll have a link to it down in the description. All right, so let's head over to the vPlayer docs page. So I've got a lot up here so far, but trust me, there's going to be a lot more. But for now, if you go here and you check out even the knowledge base, you can sort of see some of the details on the design. It does come with a micro SD card, which is where we're going to store these files. We've got the schematic and uh, some of the uh, specs on the design, how you can flash it, the expansion, all of the mechanicals, everything you need to know about the board. So let's get started with loading up some files. Okay, so we're over at the video player project here and what we need to do is convert .mp4 files to .mjpeg files because the ESP32 cannot play the .mp4 files directly. So we have to convert them to .mjpegs, which are basically stacks of JPEG files and then we play those back at 18 frames per second. Now we do this with FFmpeg, okay? And here's the path I'm actually using, or, or I should say the command. And if you're familiar with this sort of thing, you can do that. But if not, don't worry about it because I've created some software that does this automatically and you can download the converter here. So let's fire that up real quick. So here's the video converter tool and this is electron based, which should be cross platform. I haven't tested this extensively, but here it is working on my Mac and there's both a Mac and PC version of it. So essentially what this does is you're going to put all of your MP4 files, whatever they are, wherever you got them from, put them all into one folder, okay? Doesn't matter what the file names are or how long or how short, anything like that. And then you will click this button here, select.mp4 folder. Okay, and I just did that. It does, it's, the software is not great because it doesn't tell you that it has a folder, but I did that. And then you're going to convert all and you'll see that it's actually starting to process the files. So as it goes through this, we should at some point see that the processing is complete. Okay, and there you see conversion completed successfully. And if we look at the folder, now we see that we have the MJPEG files. These are the files that you will drag and drop over to your SD card and then put into the V player board and power up and it will play those on a loop forever. And that's it. That's all you got to do. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. All right, then we simply take the SD card, pop that right into the V player, power it up. And we have our videos playing that we just created. Pretty simple like that. But this isn't the same code as what we had here, right? Because now this one has this pretty cool like folder system that you can swipe between, right? That's cool. But by default, I ship with just this very simple, you know, you put all the files in the SD card and it'll just play them all. But what if you want this sort of folder view? 
Um, that's a separate project, but let me show you how easy this is to actually get going. So I actually built in automatic firmware updates from the SD card. So for any project, all you have to do is go to my GitHub page here, and I'll have links to this in the docs, but I just wanna kinda of give you a sneak peek here. So in the releases, you'll see a firmware.bin file. So for this cool folder uh, little project here, um, let's just update that one real quick. I'll show you how easy it is. All right, so we're looking at the contents of the SD card here. And all we have to do is drag and drop a firmware.bin file into the root like this. And because we know this is going to be the folder project, let's create a couple folders here. So like, I don't know, random one. And whatever you name this folder is what it's going to use for the title. And then, I don't know, let's just make up some names. You know, just whatever. So uh, I know that this is my like little KD circuits thing. And then we'll put one in there, we'll put how about that there, this guy over there. And obviously you would organize these however you wanted. Let's eject that, pop it in the V player and watch what happens. All right, so I've got that SD card loaded in here. We're going to power it up and it's going to automatically update the firmware. Okay, you see how we have the blue screen kind of lingering around? Right now it's actually doing the firmware updating. If I had the time, I could do like a pretty cool little progress bar or something, but there you go. Now it's actually doing the little folder selection thing. So random one, the Christmas, the logo, of course that's the KD circuits sort of thing. And then if we press and hold, it'll go back. What's cool about this too, like this is its own project, but as I swipe, it'll actually randomly pick a frame out. So like every time, you know, you go to it, it'll be at a, at a different frame, just to kind of give you like a sneak peek of what's in that folder. And then of course you can play it in order or shuffle play that folder. Uh, so that's all there is to that. Now let's get into the details of the V player a little bit. I just want to show you the specs just while I'm making the video here. So like I said, we, we started working on some projects with this display here and basically what that project involved was using this as a sort of GUI into a system. So it would have, you know, menu systems and show you information for diagnostics, monitoring and so on. It's just such an easy display and tiny to drop onto a PCB for that sort of thing. And of course, it's pretty cheap. And then I kind of built this up. So I actually, you know, you could build this yourself. I have the schematic available. Uh, WaveShare sells a little board for these displays. It comes with the little breakout board and the display. And then I have a, an SD card breakout all hooked up to one of these ESP32 feather boards. But obviously this is a little clunky. So I designed my own PCB for this one millimeter thick single side placements, all the parts are on one side. And here is the finished product. So when you attach the display then to that, it kind of goes through the PCB and then do this little accordion thing. And then now you've got a super thin footprint for the V player board. And then I'm no mechanical engineer, but I designed this 3D printed case, which it also comes with. So let's just take a quick peek at what's going on in there. So you see it's got the full stack inside there. And then it we can slide that out. So it's got this little back panel here. And then all slides in with sort of like these rails and keeps it all nice and tight in there. Exposing the USB-C port, which is for power to the board. Uh, as well as a full USB data connection, which is also pretty cool. So like if you want this to talk to a, uh, a, you know, some kind of computer app you're running or whatever, like I did a project where it actually displays CPU stats, uh, which was kind of neat. And let's look at the board itself for a second. These little connectors here are tiny little SH style connectors, which break out everything you could possibly think of that you could use for expansion. First question people always ask, well, what about sound? What about audio? Well, I don't have that built in because I just, again, wanted this to be a little 
knickknack that would just sit there and anytime you look at it you know you're kind of seeing something new on it and it's just kind of cool to look at um, but if you did want audio I break out some pins here that you could use uh, for i2s to an audio amplifier which would be very easy to do and then of course people also ask well, what about uh, powering it from a battery well you can do that as well and I've got instructions in the knowledge base on how to do that because you do have to be careful because the board is so tiny that we can't really do a lot of uh, voltage steering here. So I've got the USB-C connection powering the board, but if you were to power it externally from one of these pins here, like the VBAT pin, or, or I should say the VUSB pin, uh, you would have a conflict with the USB-C power. So you kind of have to be careful there. So if I give you just a tour around the board for a second, obviously we just talked about the USB-C uh, which is for power and data. It's a USB-C strap for five volt loading. So it actually provides five volts to the board. Uh, we have a micro SD card slot. We've got tag connect uh, here, which if you're familiar with that, you can use that to uh, program or debug the board. This is an ESP32 S3 Mini, which is really cool. It's a super tiny little module on there. And of course, this is a Wi-Fi Bluetooth combo module. And the S3, of course, is very powerful. So you can do a lot of cool stuff with this. This is the flat flex connector down to the display. We've got a tiny little LDO on the board for the uh, linear regulator, which provides the 3.3 volt system power to the entire board. Um, as well as we have backlight uh, control as well. So if you want to change the brightness of the backlight or like auto dim it, you could also do that with a PWM pin out from the ESP32. And then like I mentioned, we have all of these expansion connectors here. If we flip the board over, I wanted to keep it as thin and cheap as I possibly could. Now again, this is for, I did a small batch of these, so I'm not quite hitting any price breaks with this. If you are interested in it, the links are in the description. Um, but anyway, on the back side, I've broken out every single pin on the ESP32. So like, it also makes kind of a cool uh, development board for the S3 because it's bare bones. And if you're doing any work with the, uh, with the SD card, it also is pretty nice for that. And then just real quick, if we head over to the docs page again and go to the knowledge base, Let's take a quick look at the schematic just so you can sort of see what's on this board. So again, we talked about USB-C. There's your 5.1K pull downs to provide the five volts at VUSB. There is our super tiny little 3.3 uh, volt regulator. This is a really nice one from Rich Tech. There's all of our SH expansion connections. So again, you can use these here for I2S to do like an audio amplifier. You don't have to, you can use those just for any GPIO you can imagine. Um, you know, like for example, if you needed to control something, which I've got a project in mind for that, where this will connect into another system and have buttons and menu systems and all of that. I'll actually do a little cool project for that as well. And then, of course, you know, we always have to break out I squared C and a UART here. And then here's our ESP32 S3 Mini. This has 4 meg of flash, 2 meg of PS RAM. And, of course, we need that PS RAM because we are buffering in that, that, uh, that data off the SD card. And because it's so tiny, I had to actually use uh, uh, resistor networks for all the pull-ups on this board. And then for the micro SD card, I was just kind of curious what kind of speeds I could get using a full 4-bit MMC interface which is why you kind of see it set up like this. You know, typically in a lot of these projects we do, we just do it with standard, you know, single bit spy. But in this case, I'm running a full MMC, but you don't have to, you can switch that over to uh, one bit uh, spy if you'd like. And then over in this section here is the display interface, which is really nothing too complex. We're talking to it over uh, spy here and then, you know, chip select, you've got your data command line uh, reset and uh, that's about it. For the touch controller, we talked to that over I squared C and then of course you see the reset and interrupt pins there for that. And then if you want to program it yourself, you can. Here are the, the tools uh, drop down for this. I'm using, a, I'm still on an old core here. I'm using 2.0.14 for that. 
Uh, the IDE probably won't really matter that much, but anyway, I like to drop in what I'm using here. And of course, don't forget to enable PS RAM here, and it is connected over QSPY. And if you do, <laughs> And if you do happen to brick the thing and you can't get it to program over the USB interface, you can force it into download mode. And the way you do that is really simple. So you will need to short this boot IO0 pin to ground. And that's broken out on the connector here. It's also broken out on a pad on the back side. Um, but if you, if you don't have this connector, you could stick like a little jumper on that pin and then just touch and hold it to like the case of the ESP32 or actually that neighboring pin ground there because we just need to pull that low on power up. So basically you'll short that out, then plug in the USB-C and it'll be in that download mode and then you should be able to flash it. And I've had to do that a lot. In fact, I've made my own like little like jumper here because when you break the thing, it's really hard to program. So you got to plug that in and power it up and then you can flash it. And as far as those uh, connectors, here's the actual connector kit I use to make all my connectors. You can just get this on Amazon. And I also provided a link to the 3D model as well. So if you wanna make your own case, which I highly recommend because my case is terrible, uh, you can do that. Uh, I also have a link to the model with the case in case you do like my case and wanna print it yourself. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to uh, give you just a quick rundown of this board. It's kind of a fun project, like I said, and just something I've been having some fun with uh, in my spare time. And I've got a lot of fun, interesting internet connected projects I wanna show you, especially connecting to different APIs and uh, you know different internet services. So like I've got this like, you won't be able to see it. Oh, there we go. I've got this 12 monster wall of these things. Like this is gonna be a cool one here, which is shows you the national debt in real time as it's ticking, which is a pretty sweet project. This one here actually connects to the NASA API and pulls down a random image. Yeah, and this one is showing real time traffic cams, which is pretty cool. So anyway, lots of ideas here, and we'll talk all about that in future videos. Again, hopefully I'll have more time to do that. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Uh, appreciate it. Thanks for watching.